What's up guys? Welcome back sa ating channel. Again, this is your math teacher, Sir Gaor. Ready na po ba tayong matuto ng isang panibagong math lesson? So kung ready na, today we will be studying graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Of course, this is still under most essential learning competencies of Math 8 Algebra, second quarter, week 1, lesson 3. Okay, so this is an example of a graph of a linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, kung sa tingin nyo uh, may natutunan kay sa video or nagustuhan nyo yung ating video, you may like the video, comment in the comment section, and sa mga hindi pa natin subscribers, please subscribe. And the only objective for today's lesson is to graph linear inequalities in two variables. So, isa lang yung mat uh, matututunan natin kung paano ba mag-graph ng linear inequalities in two variables. Since graphing linear equations in two variables is a requirement of today's lesson, therefore our drill for today is to sketch the graph of all the given linear equations in one Cartesian plane. Label each line. So igagraph natin lahat itong apat na linear equations na to sa isang Cartesian plane lang. Tapos lalagyan daw natin ng label yung bawat line. So, syempre, kapag nag-graph natin yung x equals negative 2, ito yung kanyang label. Ito yung kanyang pangalan. Okay? So, good luck! Tapos na po ba tayo mag-graph? So, kung tapos na, let's check our answers. Para po doon sa hindi po nakapag-graph kasi hindi nila alam mag-graph, so, i-explain ko ulit. Para baka this time maintindihan na natin kasi nga sabi ko nga kanina requirement po na marunong tayong mag-graph ng linear equations in two variables bago tayo makakapag-graph ng linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, number 1, x equals negative 2. Pag binigyan tayo ng variable na x, tatandaan palagi natin isang variable lang, no, x lang, x equals a constant. No, ang, ang graph niya palagi ay vertical line. So, kapag x equals a constant, it's a vertical line. So, hanapin natin yung constant na yun, which is negative 2. Itong negative 2, nasaan siya? Doon sa x-axis. Ayun, si negative 2 sa x-axis. Tapos, magdodrawing na tayo ng vertical line. So, yan na yung graph ng x equals negative 2. Next, syempre, kapag y naman, of course, ay horizontal line naman. So, horizontal line. So, y equals 4. Asan yung 4 doon sa y-axis? So, nandun siya. So, magdadrawing lang tayo ng horizontal line. Okay. So, the, the name of the graph is y equals 4. Okay. For number 3, we have 2x minus 3y equals 6. So, ang gagamitin dito, no, dahil itong constant natin, yung ating c ay divisible ng numerical coefficients ng x and y, yung 6 ay divisible by 2, tsaka divisible by negative 3, the best gamitin ay yung tinatawag nating x and y intercepts. So, yung magdodrawing po ng ganitong klasing table, x, y, tapos lalagyan ng 0, 0 na paslan. Okay, if y is 0, kung yung y natin ay 0, so, ibig sabihin, mawawala itong negative 3y, so, ang may iwan ay 2x equals 6. So, pwede nyo ring takpan na lang yung negative 3y. So, pag tinakpan natin yung negative 3y, ang may iwan ay 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2 para ma-isolate na yung x. x equals 3. So, if x is, is if y is 0, x is 3. So, that is an x-intercept. So, yun. So, nandoon si 3,0. And then, same thing with y. So, ang tatakpan naman natin ngayon ay yung 2x. Pag tinakpan yung 2x, ang may iwan ay negative 3y. Yung negative 3y equals 6. So, i-divide natin both sides by negative 3. So, ang may iwan po ay y equals negative 2. So, if x is 0, y is negative 2, and that is the y-intercept. So, meron na tayong dalawang points. So, therefore, pwede na tayo mag-drawing ng line. And that is our line. At ang pangalan ng line na yan ay 2x minus 3y equals 6. So, yan po ang ginagamit kapag 
uh, divisible yung constant nung dalawang numerical coefficients. Kahit nga minsan hindi eh. Kung 0.5 lang, pwede na. No, makikita na natin yung gitna niya. Okay? And, number 4, y equals 5x minus 4. So, ito naman, yung gagamit tayo ng slope and y-intercept, or slope-intercept form, at mag start palagi sa ganito sa b natin, o yung y-intercept, which is at negative 4, tapos yung slope natin ay 5. So, paano tong ganito? So, ang b natin ay negative 4, ibig sabihin ay mag start tayo doon sa negative 4 sa y-axis. Nasaan yung negative 4 sa y-axis? Nandoon, sa panibagong yellow dot. Okay, tapos gagamitin natin itong slope. Itong slope na 5. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay 5. Wala tayong denominator. So, 5 over 1. Ibig sabihin ng 5 over 1, 5 rise, 1 run. So, pagbibilangin natin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 rise. Mapupunta na siya dito. Pero, meron pa tayong 1 run. Dahil positive yung ating slope, papunta tayo sa kanan. So, 1 run. So, dito dapat lalabas yung second point. So, nandoon siya. So, therefore, meron na tayong dalawang points. Pwede na tayong makapag-drawing ng, ng line. So, two points determine a line. Ayan, meron na tayong line. At ang pangalan ng line na yan ay y equals 5x minus 4. Okay, so I hope by this time, natutunan na po natin kung paano mag-graph ng linear equations in two variables. So, ayan, dahil marunong na tayong mag-graph ng linear equations in two variables, ready na rin tayong matuto kung paano mag-graph ng linear inequalities in two variables. So, here are the steps. The first one is to graph the linear inequality following the steps in graphing linear equations. So, kagaya lang talaga ng pag-graph ng linear equations. But keep in mind, Kapag meron tayong is greater than or is less than, we will have a broken line graph. So, may iba na yung ating line ngayon. Kapag nakita natin na ang sense of inequality ay is greater than or is less than, broken line daw ang meron tayo. Kapag merong equal sign, is greater than or equal to or is less than or equal to, meron naman tayong solid line. Okay? Next, number 2. Choose a testing point to determine whether or not that point is part of the solution. So, pagkatapos nating madrawing yung line, so, hahanap naman tayo ng testing point. Siyempre, para hindi mahirap, dun lang tayo sa, sa ang yung coordinates ay maliliit lang, no? So, later on, magbibigay tayo ng example para dyan. So, gagamit daw tayo ng testing point. And then, for number 3, shade the region of the solution. Dahil nagkaroon na tayo ng testing sa number 2, alam na natin, kung anong part doon yung solution. Let us now proceed to our examples. We are asked to sketch the graph of each given linear inequality. For number 1, y is less than 3. Okay, so isang variable lang ibigay sa atin at y lang. So kapag y yung binigay na variable, ang graph natin ay horizontal line. Okay, so hanapin natin yung 3 doon sa ating y-axis. Kasi y yung binigay na variable, kaya sa y-axis tayo titingin. So, ito yung 3. Drawing tayo ng horizontal line. Pero bago tayo mag-drawing, tignan muna natin yung ating sense of inequality. Ito pong is less than. So, kapag ganyan daw, dapat broken line ang ating ito drawing. Okay, so yan yung ating broken line. Tapos, this time, hindi muna natin kailangan gumamit ng testing point kasi madali lang yung given. So, pipili tayo doon sa dalawang sides. After drawing a line, pili tayo sa dalawang sides. Yung upper side ba ang pipiliin natin or yung lower side? Ang sabi kasi, y is less than 3. So, anong pipiliin nyo sa dalawa? So, the correct answer is yung nasa baba kasi nga dapat ay is less than. So, therefore, this is now the graph of y is less than 3. So, always remember, ang graph ng inequality, sabi natin yung previous video natin ay um, region of points o kaya ay half plane or plane. So, yan po yung example ng graph ng linear inequality. Okay, for number 2, we have x is greater than or equal to 2. 
Okay, in this case, x naman ang binigay. So, pag binigyan tayo ng variable na x, sabi natin, or sabi kanina, ay meron tayong vertical line. So, hanapin natin yung 2 doon sa x-axis. So, ito po yun. Drawing tayo ng vertical line. Solid line tayo ngayon kasi meron tayong equal sign dito sa ating sense of inequality. Is greater than or equal to. So, dalawang side tayo. Yung left side ba or yung right side? Kailangan daw mas mataas or pantay sa 2. It is at the right side. So, therefore, this is now the graph of x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, if you are asking para saan kaya yung is less than tsaka yung, uh, yung may equal sign tsaka walang equal sign. So, ang ibig sabihin lang po nito na yung pinaka boundary natin dito sa ating uh, graph ay hindi kasali doon sa ating solution. Pero kapag equal sign o kaya solid line yung ating drawing, yung pinaka boundary natin ay part ng solution. Number 3, we have 2x minus 5y is greater than 10. Ang gagamitin dito yung x and y intercepts, no? Kasi yung 10 ay divisible by 2 at saka ng negative 5. Okay, so pag ginobera natin yung negative 5y, ang may iwan sa atin ay 2x. Lagyan natin ng equal sign, so 2x equals 10. Divided by 2, both sides, so x equals 5. So ang ating x-intercept ay nasa 5 comma 0. Yung nasa green dot. Let's now have the y-intercept. So kobera natin yung 2x, so meron tayong negative 5y equals 10. We divide both sides by negative 5. So, 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. Kaya, nandoon yung ating y-intercept. Okay, bago tayo mag-drawing ng line, alamin muna natin kung solid or broken. Since it is, is greater than, broken line ang meron tayo. Okay, so let's proceed now to the test point. Ang pinakamagandang test point para hindi tayo mahirapan mag-compute ay yung mababa yung value. So, the best gamitin sana dyan ay yung 0, 0. Ito po yung 0, 0. Pwedeng gamitin si yung 0, 0 o yung origin kasi yung broken line natin ay hindi naman dumaan doon sa, sa ating origin. Okay, so ano bang gagawin? Para saan ba yung test point? Itetesting natin kasi kung yung part ba, kung yung part ba ng ating test point ay solution or hindi. No, kapag solution siya, ibig sabihin, yung part niya ang shaded. Kung hindi siya solution, uh, yung kabilang side ang shaded. So, dalawang sides lang naman eh, after mag-draw ng ating, ng ating line, so magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang sides. Okay, so paano natin malalaman? So, isa-substitute natin yung ating origin o yung ating test point dito sa ating inequality. Kaya ang ginamit natin ay 0, 0 para mabilis i-compute. 2 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0 greater than 10. Is 0 greater than 10? So, what do you think? It is a false statement. So, yung 0 ay hindi mas malaki sa 10. So, kung false statement siya, ibig sabihin, yung ating test point ay hindi siya part ng solution, kaya ang part ng solution or ang solution ay yung nasa kabila. So, ito dapat ang ating solution. So, therefore, this is now the graph of 2x minus 5y is greater than 10. Let's have number 4. y is less than negative 1 fourth x plus 3. So, naka-slope intercept form na siya. mag start tayo sa y-intercept na 3. Magbibigay, magbibilang tayo ng 1 rise, 4 run. Pero ang run natin ay to the left. 1 rise, 4 run. So, doon mapupunta yung isang point. And then, anong klaseng line? Meron tayong broken line. Okay, so test point na ulit tayo. The best gamitin ay ang 0, 0. So, substitute na natin yung 0, 0. Yan, kasi hindi naman dumaan yung ating line doon sa origin. Okay, so 0, 0 siya. So, mali magiging 0 is less than 3. So, sinubstitute lang. Pag, pag minultiply naman yung 0, magiging 0 na eh, no? So, 0 is less than 3. Is it a true or a false statement? It is a true statement. 
Since it is a true, a true statement, ibig sabihin yung ating test point ay part ng solution. So, magda-drawing tayo or magsha-shade tayo dito sa ating uh, lower part kasi nandoon yung ating uh, yung test point natin na tumama. And that is the graph of y is less than negative 1 fourth x plus 3. Let's now have our last example. Y is greater than or equal to 3 fifths x. Okay, wala tayong plus or minus na constant. So, ibig sabihin, ang ating y-intercept ay nandoon sa 0. So, yung green dot. So, doon, dyan dadaan yung ating line. So, let's just use the slope. Yung 3 fifths po yung slope. So, 3 rise, 5 run. After counting, so dito magpo-fall yung next point natin. Since meron tayong equal sign, ang symbol natin or ang sense of inequality natin ay is greater than or equal to, we have a solid line. Okay, in this example, we cannot use 0, 0 as the test point. So, pili na lang tayo ng iba na po pwede natin gamitin kasi nadaanan yung ating, nadaanan yung ating origin eh. Okay, so pili tayo ng iba, ng ibang test point. Okay, itong red dot, yan ang gamitin natin. Kasi mas maba, mababa rin yung value niya, eh, no? Negative 1, 1. Okay, so yun ang gamitin nating test point. Kasi hindi naman dumaan dyan yung graph natin. So that's negative 1, 1. Okay, we will substitute yung negative 1 sa x, tapos yung positive 1 sa y. Okay, madali lang din i-compute kasi 1 lang naman ang ipang-multiply. So, 3 fifths times negative 1 is negative 3 fifths. On the, uh, on the left side, positive 1 pa rin siya. Okay, so what is this now? 3 fifths is greater than or equal to, or sorry, 1 is greater than or equal to negative 3 fifths. Is it true or false? It is a true statement. So, meaning to say that our solution, or our test point rather, is part of our solution. So, yun bali ang ating shaded area. And this is now the graph of y is greater than or equal to 3 fifths x. It's time for us to practice what we've learned. We are asked to sketch the graph of each given linear inequality. Good luck! So, tapos na po ba tayo mag-graph? So, kung tapos na, here are the answers for number 1 for number 2, and for number 3. Okay, so yung mga mali natin, counter check na lang po natin para mas lalo nating maintindihan yung ating lesson for today. Okay, so I hope you learned something new from this video and I, I also hope to see you again in our next videos. What's up guys? Bye-bye!